Okay, so so Andrew, um, you mentioned there just in our last conversation, you mentioned about you, you mentioned about carbon footprint, um, and in the context of dairy farming, okay, it's very topical now. It's topical across all, all industries, but um, very recently there, the Irish Cattle Breeding Federation, who are responsible for the EBIs, they updated the EBIs and they introduced a new a new carbon sub index. And they, they, they upgraded, we'll say, the, the rest of the index as well. They increased the weightings on the beef sub-index. Can you just talk through that in terms of the changes, in terms of the EBI, and how it's going to affect selection and maybe cow type and so on going forward? Yeah, um, I suppose, um, look, I suppose we're, 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 in 2030 there, we have to reduce our carbon, I think, by 25%, um, as far as I know. Uh, so, look, there, I suppose genetics is a huge part to play in reducing carbon, uh, having a more efficient animal uh, and look, maintenance there for argument's sake. Uh, like our own herd now jumped up 15 EBI points there, um, mainly just down to the size of the cow really to be honest. Um, so look, uh, maintenance has a negative, uh, uh, a negative for carbon and um, uh, relation to uh, High maintenance, so like a heavy animal, will have a high carbon footprint. A lighter animal will have a lower carbon footprint. It all has to do with the intakes and things like that. So, look, they, I suppose they wanted to visually be able to see that. And I suppose, look, as an industry there too, we have to be seen to make, um, how would you say, make an effort there to reduce carbon. And by implementing this now, it's only the start of it and it's going to evolve more. But look, this is a, a kind of an indicator there where farmers can be seen to you know, to maybe to strive for, uh, um, to reduce their carbon footprint in their own farm okay. through, through, through genetics and breeding. Okay, and so like here we have a, we just have a, a, a screen here showing the, the evolution of the EBI. Yeah, yeah, like it's, it's back, like back, you know, a good few years ago there, pre-2000, pre with the RBI, which is a relative breeding index, so it's just all on production really, to be honest. And then in the year two, 2000, and there was the introduction of the EBI and its gas, there's only two, Two, two indexes there, milk and fertility. And you can see as the years go by, you know, beef was bought in and calving and maintenance was bought in and health was bought in there. And it's after evolving there through the years and, it, and it, this will never stop. It'll keep evolving as the years go by. There'll be things, they'll be tweaked and things like that there. So it just shows that, look, like, like, that, like breeding and genetics, nothing stays the same. Things change and evolve all the time. And the animal that we were breeding 20 years ago is a totally different animal to what we're breeding now. Right, okay, okay, and so the, the most latest, latest update there up, up to a few weeks ago, as we said, has the new carbon index. Yeah, ca cavi and, and there's a health trait in there in relation to uh, TB uh, as well, you know, so uh, yeah, it's evolving, it's evolving all the time. Okay, okay. And uh, I suppose, yeah. look, just to, in relation to the, the new EBI, you know, there, there is changes there. There's slightly a reduction on, on, on the milk sub-index there on, on the percentage. It was 33, 31. Fertility was, I think, was 31 as well. Now it's gone down to 24. But uh, look, a lot of it has, be, has been moved into carbon there. There's different, I think there's nine indexes there in the carbon, which equates to 10% of the EBI. And look, milk, fat, uh, protein there, you know, they're all they're all uh, negative for carbon because look, it takes energy to produce all these. But then for argument's sake, age of slaughter will be positive because if you can get that uh, animal there, and this, this is the beef index in, in, in the cow, uh, that they're trying to just get a little bit more uh, carcass weight into those uh, dairy cows. So the beef farmers can you know, finish these animals uh, 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 sooner. So age of slaughter, so if we can get that animal 20 days sooner at slaughter, it's a lower carbon footprint, and look, it's more profitable for the farmer and better for the environment. And look, carcass weight as well. You know, you've live weight there, gestation, survival there. They're all, they're all positive things there. So if the animal survives longer in your herd, the, you know, calving interval, you know, if we've lower calving interval there, you know, so these are, these are positive traits. So there's negative traits and, and positive traits in the carbon okay. index. And, and, and quickly in summary, that kind of the, the milk production traits the higher they are, they're considered to have a higher carbon, carbon. footprint, which will have a lower than carbon index itself. E exactly like within a, the EBI. Yes, and like okay. when you look at the milk sub index, there you know you've 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 fat and protein kgs in the milk sub index. Yeah. Now, like fat and protein, uh, they're in the milk sub index, but they're also in the carbon index. So 
coming back to the mill sub-index, the mill kgs in the mill sub-index actually, uh, you know, there's a processing cost involved in that, mm. you know, and like every kg of milk and fat and protein that's produced has a carbon footprint. Yeah. So with extreme high kgs of fat percentages and protein percentages there and milk, you know, they're all, they all leave a carbon footprint. Mm. And I suppose, look, this is why it's implemented there to show that, look, you don't get all this out without putting a lot of energy back in and maybe maintenance and, you know, the type of cow you have there and the weighting of the different, um, you know, indexes there will we'll show you whether you're... I look, the example is here is the cows behind us there and all, you know, on the different sizes, um, you know, so... Okay, so, and so this cow here, she, I think you were speaking earlier, this is probably one of your heaviest cows? Yeah, this is one, like, so she was, she was actually um, minus for, for beef on the, on the beef sub-index. She's positive for beef, beef now. On the previous index, she was On minus. the previous index, yeah, she was negative for beef. She was minus for beef. And now I think she's, I think she's plus nine now or something okay. like that. You know, but on the pl that's a plus, obviously, for, 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 for that. But then her carbon index is really poor. Okay. Like, so our carbon index, is, I think, is zero or plus one. Okay. You know, meaning that, look, she's a big animal there. She's not the most efficient animal that's there. And look, we had a, a smaller girl there. I think she's actually over there in the corner now. Like, she's one of the highest index. She's 38 now for carbon. You know, but she's yeah. negative in beef. You know, so like our own herd here actually jumped 15 EBI points and it was all down to really the carbon really like, okay. you know. And, and mostly like your, your kilos of milk solids output per cow is high, which you would have said is negative, would have had a negative effect on the carbon index. But it's, the, it's probably the survivability and the live weight of the, of the herd, which is in, again increasing it up again. Is that, that fair Exactly, yeah, yeah. And look, I suppose maintenance. Um, that, that more compact, lighter cow, you know, that, that, that survives, you know, and like, you know, like the, the animals didn't all of a sudden, an, an animal didn't become just a poor animal there. Like I always say, you know, just because there's a carbon index there now and you're a little bit down or a little bit up, you know, the, the cow hasn't changed a whole lot, to yes. be honest, really. Yeah, 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 Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So um, we, um, you know, we still have the same animal there, but I suppose, you know, genetic, genetics and... The, 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 the genetic makeup and the way it's interpreted and the environments that we're in going forward there, you know, it just changes. So look, okay. it's not that these cows or the cows people have at home are, are worse a week ago or two weeks ago. You know, that's not the case. You know, still, they're still profitable animals, but it's just the evolution, you know, of, okay. of, of, of breeding and genetics and trying to future-proof the animal we have now for the environment going yeah, okay. forward. Okay, and really, so it's been developed Again, the, the current genetics are as they were, um, but it, it, it probably affects the decisions in terms of bull selection going forward. If you have a focus or an emphasis that the industry needs to have on carbon and, and, and lowering carbon emissions, well, then they need to consider this. Yeah, yeah, look, it's a brave move for IC, with ICBF there, and I think it's something that's, that's, that's welcome, and it should be welcome. Now, it's going to evolve and it's going to improve and it's going to get better because it's kind of, it's kind of hard to measure methane, you know, at the moment and things like that there. So, but look, we have to be seen as an industry to make a step. So look, uh, you know, I welcome the carbon footprint there. It, it shows the, the efficiency of <coughs> some of the animals and the inefficiency of some of the animals. So okay. look, it's, it's an evolution there and look, it's, it's, to me, it's the right way forward. Like. Okay. So let's talk briefly again, so about the health, the health sub-index. So... You know, previously there was very little emphasis on this, on the health sub index, and now it's up to 10% itself of the EBI itself. Yeah, yeah. How, I, how important is it? Yeah, I think, look, to me, I'd like to see it more even, like, and I'd like to see, look, it's the, the problem is it's the data that's collected from the health sub index. So, like, TB now can be very easily read, you know, like, it, there's huge data on farms and things like that there. So, look, they know there that some uh, bull selections there are that they, they have little or no emphasis on um, whatever we call it, on. Um, um, on, 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 on TB, so now if you can breed, say, if we have a problem uh, area there for argument's sake, you can actually breed animals there that can re actually reduce the amount of TB, yeah. you know, so it's, a, it's amazing, like there's some bulls there, you know, uh, that uh, their, their daughters never got TB, mm -hmm. you know, and like you'd say, how is that, but through genetics there, for some reason, I think they don't even know themselves, um, so look, this is, this, this is something to look at, it's, it's something new, it's something welcome, 
uh, like lameness and mastitis and, and somatic cell count there, look, they've always been there. So look, I don't think the weighting of those have changed much, yeah. but the TB there, as you can see, it's nearly half this box, which is 5%. Okay. So, but look, um, through uh, antibiotics uh, uh, resistance there and everything there, and the, 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 what we're going to go through now with reduced antibiotic uh, use on, 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 on in herds, and look, uh, you know, you have to look at the health index there to improve, um, you know, okay. cow health as well as human health as well. Okay, very good. Again, just to re-emphasize um, in terms of the new EBI run that came out and the changes in terms of the weightings that came out, of the weightings of the sub-indexes themselves. So here again, we have another graphic showing the changes of the weightings. Um, so again, as you said before, maybe just to go through them, very little change in the milk sub-index. Yeah. Um, a, a significant drop in the fertility sub-index yep. and then carbon being introduced yep. and the dominant part of the, the positive aspect of the carbon is generally lighter cows with higher survivability will have a higher carbon footprint yep. is that right? yeah yeah Okay. Um, health has increased from 10% or from 4% to 10% the beef has gone up from 8% to 10% uh, management stays the same and then maintenance has dropped. Again, of course, maintenance, as we know, is a prediction of live weight. So, so live weight is kind of covered within the carbon sub-index, um, and, and one kind of maybe balances the other. That's correct, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, I suppose, in light, in light of these changes, um, it, it is our intention to do, a, to do a, an, another video in terms of how the active bull list will have changed from these new changes. But going forward, like, how do you predict going forward in terms of sire selection for the next year, two years, three years, and how this might evolve even more? How, how is the, the, the national population going to change in light of the changes to the EBI, do you think? Yeah, um, look, um, that's, a, that's a good question, uh, Noel. Uh, look, with, with breeding and genetics, it's going to be slow. Um, you know, and look, I'm just looking at the percentages here, you know, and like the milk, milk, uh, is, is, is gone down a bit but the, the main one really is the, is the fertility there you know it's gone from 33 down to 24 and look a lot of that is built into the carbon 10% uh, uh, into the carbon there so but look there's another thing there is the health has gone up to 10 but that's more or less the same but they've um, factored in uh, TB the beef is so look there's more emphasis in beef now um, uh, so look that's positive there for the, the bee farm that's buying these bull calves. Calving now is, is one thing that I'd be just a little bit worried about. You know, calving at a 10% there. Uh, might have mentioned it there now, but now it's 7%. Like, the potential is there that you could have slightly harder calvings now. Okay. Because you're trying to push up the bee side of things. And it's very hard to get the bee side up with easy calving. So, look, that's another thing. And look, the main thin thin is another thing. But look, this is going to be slow evolving there. You're not going to see huge changes there uh, in the short to mean term future. Uh, uh, no, so look, these are slow, these are, 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 are small percentage change there. The biggest one is the carbon. Um, but look, this is going to take years, you know, okay. and look, this is going to change again maybe next year or the year after and look, maybe a new model in relation to the, 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 the milk sub-index there is probably change as well in, in relation to the environment we're going forward. So, okay. look, it's changing. It's, 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 it's going to make a, a slight difference going forward, but realistically, it's not going to make a huge difference there. The carbon being the biggest one there, okay. because we can see there now, it's, um, you know, it's, it's, it's there in front of us there now to see uh, our, our carbon there, and, um, which we couldn't see before, really, to be honest. Okay. Yeah.